Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte Kilpatrick, reporting for Vaccine Nation at the World Vaccine Congress in Washington. I'm delighted that today we're joined by Dr. Ed Kelly of Apigex. Thank you so much for joining us today. A pleasure. So to kick us off, would you just kindly introduce yourself and your role within the organization? Sure. Uh, my name's Ed Kelly and I'm uh, the Chief Global Health Officer for Apigex. Uh, I've been there to start up company, uh, so I've been there a few years, but I used to be the head of the Director for Service Delivery and Safety for the World Health Organization for about 16 years. And then before that, I uh, was in charge of the U.S. National Healthcare Reports for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services here in Washington, D.C. Uh, for, again, about a decade. And for that work for the U.S. Agency for International Development in Western North Africa and Latin America. Fantastic. So a really varied experience there, which is really exciting. Um, so you're joining us to present on pre-filled injectables for safe and effective vaccinations. Could you just give us a sort of preview of what you covered in this session? Well, the, the session was part of a, a pre-conference workshop, which I think is a great thing that the Congress has, uh, partially because, I mean, now you can hear the buzz and see all these people working around because we're in the middle of the first day, but, you know, you have meetings that you're trying to see people on, there's sessions going on, so it gets super busy. And the pre-conference workshops uh, give an opportunity for people to show up, get registered, and then spend some time really on more of a deep dive of a topic. So the, the whole afternoon was devoted to uh, vaccine delivery. So uh, actually, I told this story at the start of the, my speech, which is two years ago, in your very nice conference in Barcelona. It was the first time I was attending. Uh, I, you had a great uh, plenary panel of a bunch, we were just coming out of COVID, great plenary panel who were talking about the investment on COVID vaccines, how it had been, uh, the, you know, this massive effort, but had resulted in a big boon and a big attention around more investment needed for vaccines. And I stood up and I said, I agree, we need more money for, for better vaccines, but uh, in this Vaccines Congress, there's literally no session talking about vaccinations. And so now, two years later, the, anyway, the Congress listened, and um, the, we now had this really nice session that uh, was devoted to delivery. So we had a discussion around our own device, Appyjack, which is a pre-filled uh, device, that uh, single dose, that's produced with blow-fill seal technology. So it can produce 30,000 uh, doses uh, an hour, and at very high speed and a very low cost. But you had other technologies like the micro ray patches um, and other things there. So it was great. The, all of us were really pleased to, to be there. And we were looking, you know, soon we'll get a plenary session uh, the next time around. But so the, my talk was around deliver, the importance of uh, these new uh, innovations for delivering actually vaccinations with all these new vaccines we have. Fantastic. So in what you've just said, you mentioned a bit about coming out of COVID-19. and. It would be fascinating to understand what you and your team are thinking about for vaccines. Sort of as we emerge from pandemic times, everyone's focused on vaccines. What are the next things we're considering with vaccines now? Yeah, I think, well, there's two challenges, I think. Uh, and I spoke about this a little bit. One, um, you know, COVID uh, itself was a big push on these new uh, line of vaccines around mRNA, uh, uh, DNA vaccines, and, and other uh, innovations there for more rapid development. It's also, you can see, we work with a COVID-19 uh, vaccine manufacturer based in Catalonia, um, in Spain, named HIPRA, and they have a very effective, they looked at mRNA and decided that, that COVID, based on the disease structure, it would be better uh, as uh, a protein subunit vaccine. And they've produced that. We're working on its distribution. It's the only uh, vaccine uh, that's fully uh, approved by WHO for COVID. All the other ones were emergency uh, approved. But the reason I'm talking about that is that because we had that investment in mRNA and the more rapid production, they've pushed themselves to be more rapid in their own production. So I think the whole industry has moved in terms of more rapid response on vaccines. But the challenge is that, that COVID also gave us the biggest hit to routine vaccination globally. We had 50 million kids who missed vaccinations during COVID. Some countries have caught up, but we're about to miss the window 
to vaccinate those uh, kids globally, which leaves us with like decades of, of vaccine preventable outbreak, outbreaks around the world. So for companies like ours, Apigec, that cares about, and it's not just in developing countries, that was in the US, in the UK, and all across Europe, we have this problem. We have a big catch up job. So for a company that cares about vaccine delivery, because we have those vaccines, we've had them for decades, uh, it's all around trying to get those out to the places that they need to get to. So that means some sort of devices that can be used outside of clinic settings, uh, which Abject uh, can. So that's that's our big uh, next frontier, I think. Absolutely. So again, you've beautifully just touched on what I'm about to ask you. Could you give us a, a comment on the difference between investment in vaccine development and vaccine delivery? And what what are you here to sort of ask from the vaccine community in that space? Yeah. Well, uh, I think it gets back to the point I was making earlier that we've spent billions, rightly so, on new and better vaccines. But, you know, when you talk to my colleagues at the World Health Organization and UNICEF, actually they're super worried about how many new vaccines are coming. Like we have the new vaccine on uh, malaria that's just come out, which is a massive breakthrough. We've been trying to work on that for years. It seems to be quite effective, but it looks like it's going to have to be delivered as a, in terms of seasonal boosters. So the idea that you're going to seasonally boost all of the children in malaria endemic Africa every year is, is a, delivery a massive delivery challenge. So we're spending money on new vaccines, but we're spending almost nothing on these, basically these leaky pipes of vaccine delivery that have existed for 30 years, which is the expanded program on immunization, the EPI program. I, and that more investment needs to be done on that type of innovation. Now, we're here in Washington, D.C. We were the benefit, um, which is good to give a shout out to the U.S. government. Uh, you never know when they're listening, but uh, that uh, they, they funded us during COVID uh, and gave us the opportunity to get off the ground. We still have a very active collaboration with HHS. BARDA just announced that this Congress, uh, a new microarray patch challenge. So there's a lot of, there's growing interest, but we're still, it's a fraction compared to the, how much we're spending on, on vaccine uh, development. We just need to have that better balance. Absolutely, and I'm sure that your work will hopefully shift the, the balance a little bit in more closer to equilibrium, hopefully. Um, so my final question is, what are you looking forward to at the Congress, or when you leave, what are you hoping you will have achieved? Well, I'm sure you have a lot of folks who are, you know, say that they are here to, you know, make connections and business meetings. For us, um, and we were chatting just before uh, the interview that this the opportunity to be here with a mix of public sector leadership as well as private sector leadership. So CEOs of major vaccine companies and, and other vaccine related companies, but also very senior people uh, within the U.S. government and U.S. government programs, but also you know, CDC. But then also you have the European Health Emergencies uh, Agency, you have the UK's uh, National Security Agency. So those types of public and private sector mixes are clearly how we're going to solve some of these. I think um, I was looking, we had a bunch of sessions on pandemics and how we're unfortunately uh, getting our eye off the ball a little bit on the pandemic work. So coming away with some sense of where are things going on that is the, is the second piece. And basically, um, the third piece is starting to plan uh, my Barcelona Europe uh, tri trip for next year. So I'm looking forward to that. We're definitely going to be there for, for that Congress as well. Fantastic. Well, perhaps we can catch up again in Barcelona and hear how the year's been for you. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure being here.